Hi everyone, it's Andrea Hess, and today we're taking a good hard look at how you may be keeping yourself out of the financial freedom that you want to manifest. before that how we do one thing is how we do everything. It makes absolute sense, of course. We're whole beings. And so we might mentally compartmentalize our, you know, relationships into one corner of our lives, our health into another, and maybe our financial life into yet a third. But the truth is that there's no real separation between the various aspects of our lives, right? So our health, our relationships, our money, our work, our parenting, everything is a reflection of everything else. So what does that mean for our financial freedom? Well, it means, unfortunately, that there can be no financial freedom in our lives if we're not also free in every other way. And truthfully, most of us are well and truly stuck in a prison of our own making. And that prison is the management, or the attempt at management, really, of what other people think of us. So just consider for a moment how much of our lives revolves around managing what other people may think of us. So we want to be considered polite. So we write a thank you or a Christmas card, even though we hate writing them and we think they're stupid, right? Maybe we want to be considered a good mom. So we attend our child's sporting event or school bingo night, even though we don't really want to be there. We want to be considered a good friend. So we return that phone call, even though we just really, really want some time to ourselves. Maybe we want to be considered a good employee, so we stay late at work. We want to be considered a supportive spouse, so we listen to our partner complain when we really just want them to shut up and quit whining, okay? Maybe we want to be considered sexy, and so we put on high heels that we hate and they hurt. We want to be considered popular, so maybe we stay in touch with people we don't like, just so that once a year we can throw a big party and lots of people will show up. I mean, the list of things we do that we don't really want to do, all in an attempt to manage other people's perception of us, it goes on and on and on. We all do it in lots of different ways. Lots of us don't even realize that what we're doing is what we don't really want to do, simply because we've made our entire lives about managing other people's perception of us. It's become a habit. And that habit has pretty much obliterated all sense of ourselves and what we really want. The funny thing is that often we try to manage the perceptions of people that we don't even know. Like that mythical creature known in business as our ideal prospect, that's a great example. We don't even know these people. <laughs> And yet we frequently do all kinds of things that we don't really want to do in our business in order to make our prospects think that, you know, we're an expert or we're cool or we're more successful than we really are. But it doesn't just happen in business. We try to manage our children's perception, our spouses, our parents, sometimes even after our parents are long gone from our lives. Uh, trying to manage people's perception, it is a prison of our own making. And as long as we decide to stay in this prison of doing things we don't want to do in order to influence other people's opinion of us, we can't have financial freedom. Because those two vibrations, obligation and freedom, they just can't play together in a single human experience, right? We can't do obligation and expect a result of freedom. That's just not how universal law works. So what if you just did only what you really wanted, regardless of what other people might think? It's a dangerous question. We are actively discouraged by others to even think it through because doing only what we really want, it's usually highly inconvenient for the people in our lives. But really think about it for a second. Don't just dismiss it. What would you stop doing if you just didn't give a rat's ass about other people's opinion of you? What would you start doing? Now, your mind may be objecting loudly right about now, you know, but Andrea, people can't just do whatever they want to do. We'd have chaos on our hands. 
That's actually not true. We can do exactly what we want to do as long as we're willing to take full responsibility for the consequences of our choices. You see, there's two ways we can live. We can follow the rules of society, the roles that we've been assigned as men and women and spouses and parents and children and within our industry. Now, if we follow those rules, we will get a fairly predictable outcome. You know, we can do well in school, go to college, get a good job, make a decent living, that kind of thing, you know, normal life. Most people are totally happy with that. And most people are fairly content following the rules of society and doing what they're supposed to do in order to be good men, women, fathers, mothers, employees, sons, daughters, and so forth. But we want an extraordinary outcome not a predictable outcome. We want financial freedom. We want to make way more than enough money. We want an abundance of income. That's not normal. That's extraordinary. So we want to live outside of the normal of society. We want to buy whatever we want, travel whenever we want, work wherever we want without a boss telling us what to do. We want to do what we love. We want independence and freedom. And independence and freedom is just not a vibrational match for doing what other people expect or want us to do. Those energetic qualities, they just don't go together. So if you're not creating the financial freedom that you want, or if you're simply ready to up level, just ask yourself where you may be keeping yourself stuck in a prison of your own making. Just ask yourself where in your life you're doing what others want or expect you to do rather than expressing your authentic and divine self. Breaking free of this prison, it's not convenient. It's not convenient for us, not for others. Family members don't like it. <laughs> the teachers at your kid's school may not like it. You know, even your prospects and your clients might not like it. But you can't have financial freedom if you're not willing to liberate yourself in all other areas of your life. The question is, is your freedom worth the inconvenience. This is Andrea Hess. Thank you so much for watching.